Fasten your seatbelt and turn up the radio. We're going on a road trip. Four guys in a caddy, cast and ready to go. On the road to Memphis, we ain't getting that slow. Got rock star energy. Polish delight Blowing through traffic Driving the night A flash of white in the dark Just a bump in the night Feline acrobat Taking terminal flight Two hits for the kitty Two hits for the kitty Two hits for the kitty Elvis Presley changed American culture with his first records, which were cut at the now legendary Sun Studios in Memphis. More than 50 years later, the old building is still there, serving double duty as a working studio and as a museum honoring the early days of rock and roll. What it didn't have until recently was a 50s era lathe recorder, like the one that first pressed the sound of Elvis's voice. And that's where Wausau musician John Altenberg came in. And so it's an acetate recorder is what these are, where they literally burned right to these big old 78 discs, you know, the ones that are, you know, a quarter inch thick that you can break on your countertop. And they said, we've searched the world over and we cannot find an original acetate recorder. I said, well, I have two. Altenberg had acquired the two ancient lathe recorders for an exhibit at the Marathon County Historical Society, and he was looking for a new home for them. So he gave them to Sun Studios, and they gave him a free recording session and a chance to make some history of his own. That was our goal, just to get down to Sun and, and do it the old-fashioned way. And uh, everybody in one room and, and just call out tunes and, and see what happens. Walk on, walk on, walk on. What happened was a new CD of Roots music by Altenberg and some of his Wausau area friends called Johnny and the Motones, Two Hits for the Kitty. The CD is saturated with the karma of Sun Records, which not only gave a start to Elvis, but to Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, Carl Perkins, B.B. King, Howlin' Wolf, and Jerry Lee Lewis. In fact, Jerry Lee Lewis's piano is still there in the cramped one-room studio, and John Altenberg had fun playing it. It was a, as out of tune when I played it as it was back in the 1950s, so it was great. You know, I, I loved it. It was just an old spinet piano. You know, not a great piano, but, you know, that's what they had back in those days. And while Altenberg was banging out a rhythm on Jerry Lee Lewis's old piano, his guitar player, Chris O'Keefe, was coaxing vintage sounds out of the studio's old tube amplifiers. As it usually went, it was the ones that I aimed for at first of the ones that I couldn't touch. <laughs> they were the ones that were really valuable, the signed pieces and such, but uh, there was still a lot, a lot to choose from. Lovers of old rock and roll and blues are apparently finding a lot to choose from on Johnny and the Motones, two hits for the kitty. The retro record is not only a bestseller in the musician's hometown of Wausau, but has shown up on the national blues charts. Glenn Moberg, Wisconsin Public Radio. You know, at first when I got there, I was thinking it was just going to be another recording gig, and you know, you kind of look around, and it's not much to look at at all. <laughs> it's pretty much a uh, little bit bigger than this room, and, and pretty damn dirty. And once you start playing, though, and you look around, and you see those old vintage photographs, and you start thinking about who's been playing there, and who played there throughout the years, and the kind of recordings that came out of there, it starts to hit you, and it's a, it's a pretty neat feeling. Just cut the, the acoustic out of it. Okay. Don't be talking after the song ends here. When you walk in there, 
And it's, it's no bigger than my little studio in Mosinee. You know, matter of fact, I think it may be smaller than my studio, but you, you just you just feel it. Everything is it's no different than it was in the 1950s. It truly there's there's no difference. The same floor tiles, same block walls, everything. I mean, whoever had it for a while didn't do a thing to it, so which was great because they didn't they didn't screw it up. I got to know the people at Sun Studio. Uh, obviously, I got to know the owner. They were very thankful. Uh, then we started talking about nobody's ever really done a, a, an original blues roots recording. Presto, he says, come on in. You know, I would love to have you guys as my guests come on down and, and do a recording session. So it was a couple years after that, and we load up the uh, borrowed caddy and uh, from my buddy Mitch Vigut. And next thing we know, we're recording in Sun Studio. It's a great road trip. Take it two times and we're done. Yeah. Keep on walking. Uh, way back home. Just run through a little bit of it. Let's get a clean count on the on the intro. Y'all yeah. want to try one? Sure. sure. Everybody do a purple one. Yeah, it actually one. sounds great in the headphones, I'll tell you that. Cool. There we go. <laughs> 